Okay, welcome back uh, after the break. So now we can for a break, we are looking at chapter eight, uh, prophecies, okay, and uh, we receive prophecies. One may be tested to, yeah, to scripture. Second one is, yes, the Holy Spirit reveals it to us, but uh, is, you know, is it glorifying Jesus? Okay, so the prophecies that we receive, but whatever the Holy Spirit says, we always glorify uh, Jesus. Um, you know, does the Holy Spirit witness in my spirit about this prophecy? So if you receive a prophecy from somebody else, you can go back and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a witness. Okay, so anyways, the Holy Spirit, we learn all different ways the Holy Spirit can give us inner witness. So any one of the ways the Holy Spirit can give inner witness. And also, um, you know, is, now, is it according to what God has been speaking to you or what he's telling you or showing you, God can confirm it to different people. So it can be even when you're worshiping, you know, God can be speaking to you on the same lines. Um, somebody's preaching, teaching, Bible study, somewhere you go, you're reading God's word, the quiet time, God can be speaking on the same uh, topic. So it's just basically a more like a, a, con a confirmation. Okay, so prophecy is a more like confirmation. So one of the other things is, has God been speaking to you about these uh, things? Now, it's good to receive prophecies, but it's also important to act upon the prophecy uh, at the right time, how you need to execute it, how you need to use it, how you need to bring it about in the right time and the right uh, season. I remember once, uh, you know, a couple of years, a couple of years back, I had a severe back problem, severe back pain. <clears throat> it was not very major, but just a doctor told me, you know, 10 days, you just have to rest, you shouldn't go anywhere, sleeping, sleeping. You know, reading everything on the on the bed. Okay, but it was not possible because I was involved in the school ministry. I had to travel sometimes in a day. I used to travel 60 kilometers, you know, right from my place to Ryan Yanaka. It's 30 kilometers. And from there back in my is 30 kilometers. So almost 60 kilometers a day. And uh, I went to this meeting and uh, um, you know, uh, no. Uh, when I was going through this, you know, uh, uh, God reminded me about a prophecy that I had, I had uh, actually received long time back. So I went back to the book that I had written, and the prophecy says, God will heal you of your back pain. Okay. And I just, uh, I knew that it was a time for me to, you know, you know, claim that prophecy, what was spoken. I just claimed it. And of course, there's a different uh, instant when I was. Uh, also, how I was feeling of my back pain, which I can, uh, you know, I can share with you some of that. But, you know, uh, there are prophecies that is written, but, you know, uh, given to you, you can write it down. Might not be the right time, but it can, can be, you know, some, happening sometime in the future. And you can pull it out and you can declare that prophecy, speak that, because that's God's word, that's God's promise to you. So you can declare it and you can receive, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, guidance, uh, leading, or healing, or whatever you want. Now, you know, uh, prophecies come as prophetic uh, confirmation. Uh, that's the confirmation by the Holy Spirit. What is the uh, prophecies can be a confirmation? How is can it be a confirmation? Now, you're planning to do something, or you're planning to do somewhere in your ministry, or go somewhere and want to take a job, or you're planning to get, uh, you know, making uh, some decision, you're preparing yourself to make some decision. You're preparing yourself to go on a certain course in life, certain direction in life, okay? And you're still waiting on the Lord. So maybe you know somebody just who doesn't know you comes and prays for you and they prophetically release a word and say, "Hey, this is what I was thinking about, or what was leading me, or I was planning to do." So it's just a confirmation. Yeah, you can go ahead and do it. Sometimes there can also be prophetic uh, prophecies that we receive can be. Prophetic direction. God is directing you in the way that you need to uh, go, what He wants you to do. So uh, you can receive a prophecy through which God is directing you. You need to do this, you need to go here, you need to go there. You know, this is what you need to do. You have to go to a certain place or you have to engage in this certain activity. So something that God is basically um, directing you and showing you through the uh, prophecy. Prophetic uh, prophecies can also be a revelation. Okay, a revelation means, uh, you know, you will have even talents, uh, uh, you know, you have even talents, gifts, that you never used in your life. And you always see yourself as a, as a good 
hopeless good for nothing a failure in life uh, but you know god has given you the seeds you know remember that we talked about the seed principle the talents the gifts the abilities that you have uh, you don't know yourself you're always looking at yourself as being a failure and continue to be a failure but through a pro- prophecy you can you know the person can say hey god is going to use you as a mighty worship leader you say oh you know i never knew that yeah, i can play the guitar but i never knew i would be a worship leader oh no god is going to use you mightily to do this and this and this so you say oh you know yeah i have a gift but you know, i never thought big about it uh but when you was when you actually talking you will be releasing a prophecy uh you're releasing something about that person's future the plan and purpose that god has for their uh, lives uh, some seeds that are dormant that means that are not activated they're not using it it's just lying there in their lives and when you prophesy you know you're actually setting them up for the future you're re- revealing things that god has for them in the future what he wants uh, them to do in the uh, future okay so there is an example here in page number uh, 104 and 105 where uh, you know pastor sharing an experience about uh, how he received a prophetic word uh, you will basically read that later on okay uh, so we'll move on any questions on this uh, chapter and for prophecies anyone has any questions very short chapter but anyone has any questions Okay, so far we're looking at how God has been guiding us and leading us. Um, we see that you know, He's guiding us through His Word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We saw eight ways. Uh, we saw that He leads us through the voice of the Holy Spirit. He leads us through dreams and visions. He leads us through prophecies. Uh, he can also guide us and lead us through angels. Okay, anyone has been guided and led by angels? No. Okay, angelic beings. No. Okay. Uh, anyone has any questions about so far the lesson on prophecy? Online students, anyone has any questions? Also, so we can ask. So let's say we have a God. Um. Things that happen in this world and sorry. Something doesn't happen like that. Okay. Once we share it from God and ask Him to make it like any of these things, like like from others, actually, or like from someone else, it's fine with us. Yeah, you can also ask God to reveal it to you because it's something that's so personal to you, right? It's something that you wanted to happen, it didn't happen. Uh, like if you want from someone else, it is, it's a it's a confirmation. Yeah, yeah. You can say God, you you confirm it. He can confirm it through His Word. He can show you a vision, a dream. He can send an angel to speak to you. He can send, you know, give you wise think up, wise counsel from you know people who counsel you. Also to prophecies. Yes, you can ask. I think the internet uh, connection is very. Poor. Is this the main line? Because it's gone very low. My. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you please switch on the light? Thank you. Yes. Okay. So we look at chapter nine. angels okay uh, so when angels appear in the old testament yes in the new testament early church in the in the new testament yes in the new testament pair angels okay the chosen yeah Uh, Zachariah. Yes, even Paul was in prison. Remember, angel. Okay, so um, so it was active during the Old Testament, New Testament, early church. Are angels active even today? Yes. Can 
are dangerous around you, you know that. God sent his angels to protect you and guard you. Uh, Psalm 91. Okay. So, um, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, what does angels do? They are the Lord all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who inherit salvation. So, what do, what do angels do to us? They basically protect us, yes. They also serve us. Did you know that? Ministering angels, ministering spirits, they serve us. Okay. Um, so we see, uh, you know, uh, in the New Testament, we see Luke chapter 1, how the angel came to Mary, okay? We also see in Matthew chapter 1, how Joseph in a dream was instructed by the angel uh, to take Mary as his wife. Uh, we also saw in Matthew chapter 2, how, you know, the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and instructed him uh, to go to uh, Egypt, okay? We also see in um, the early church, you know, in Acts chapter 5, when the angel delivered Peter from prison, <coughs> right, and instructed him to go and preach in the temple, uh, the angel also telling Philip to go down to Gaza, where Philip will preach the gospel of the man from Ethiopia. Okay, the uh, angel appeared to Cornelius, directly he to send men to Peter's house, who was living in uh, Simon the Canaan's house uh, in Joppa in the sea. All of these examples I've already given, so I'm just, uh, you know, just pointing it out. Uh, the angel released Peter from, from his chains in prison. You know that, right? Peter was in chains in prison. He was guarded by all of the soldiers around. The angel wakes him up, says, get up. He thinks he sees a dream and a vision. But the, the chains just fall off. Then um, the angel tells him, put on your clothes, your cloak, put on your shoes. And then he says, follow me. And they follow him and they Guards are just standing there, the gates open, they're just walking past, they walk through the corridor, and the main gate of the jail just opens. And all the time, Peter is thinking he's seeing a dream. And then the Peter suddenly, uh, the angel suddenly leaves Peter, and then he realizes he's on the floor all by himself. What he was seeing was not a dream, it was a reality. Okay? And then he goes to the house where he knocks on the, on the door. Remember, the servant girl came. Called Rhoda comes and she sees uh, Simon Peter, and all the people there were actually praying for Peter. And he goes and says, Peter is here, and they say, No, we've actually seen his, uh, you know, his, uh, uh, maybe you've seen a dream or vision, or you've seen his spirit. And no, no, he's there. No, so instead of inviting him, she's so shocked, she goes to the door and she goes inside. Okay, so we see that how you know, the angel leads uh, Peter out of uh, prison. We also know that angel struck King Herod dead, right? Uh, in Acts chapter 12, verse 23, um, in the, we also see in Acts chapter 27, how the angel appeared to Paul while, um, while on sail to Rome and assured him that, uh, you know, when he was going the ship, there would be a, there was a big storm, right? Uh, they would lose everything on the ship, all the cargo they were selling, but, you know, they were carrying, but no life would be damaged. And he said, you will also be saved. And you will appear before Caesar, Caesar for the trial because he was taken as a prisoner to uh, Rome. Okay, so uh, angels can appear to us, they can speak audibly to us, uh, they can speak to us without being visible, they can speak to us, you know, even uh, being invisible. So, either way, they can show themselves to us visibly or they can show, they can be invisible, uh, they can influence our thoughts. That's how they minister to us. They influence our thoughts. They say, no, this is not right. It's not good. This is what you should be doing. This is where you should be going. Don't go there. Go home. Go here. Uh, they can put thoughts in our minds. Uh, angels can speak to us, uh, uh, you know, with our, in our inner man, in our spirit man, in our ears. And even angels can minister to uh, us when even they are unseen. Okay? But can we worship angels? No, we don't worship angels, we worship only God. Do we see angelic visitations? No, we just see Jesus. He wants to send an angel to visit us and to speak to us, that's fine. But we are not seeking angelic visitations, we're just seeking God. We seek to see him, we want to see him. Okay. Um, we must discern angelic visitation because they can even come as 
this guy is as a demonic demonic uh, demon can come as a car you know just like an angel so it can be very very dangerous we can we need to uh, you know, they can imitate uh, angels satan can and his demons can imitate angels uh, we can ask uh, god for the assistance of his angels according to his word we can you know like some might be once and the angels to call us and protect us from all our evil ways even when i'm walking you know in the dark sometimes god send your angels to guard me and uh, protect me uh, we can speak god's promises uh, declaring what his angels do for us and they respond to the voice of his word okay so 103 can somebody read some 103 was 20 please some 103 was 20 See, the angels do the work of God, and they listen to His voice, and they do what He wants them to do. So you can declare His promise, okay? But we are not worshiping angels. We are not seeking for them to visit them. We are actually seeking to see God, you know, um, Jesus, you know, to reveal Himself to us. Any questions on angels? So, uh, yes, they're uh, angels to guard them and protect them, yes. But we can't say they're just for them, but you, we, they just do God's bidding. They can, they can be assigned as well. There are thousands and thousands of people of angels. Yes, yes, Sean? One minute, I'm Uh, yes, God can speak to the Holy Spirit. He can even send angels. If He desires to do that, He can even do that to speak to us. Like give us the clarity to speak to us, the understanding. Or just, you know, to... An angel in visitation is so wonderful, right? Just to experience the spiritual realm. It's just wonderful. Maybe God just wants to excite you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he just wants you to enjoy the things of the spiritual realm as well. He's not just a God who's boring, just follow the same format, come on, just follow A, B, C, D, and that's it. You know, he can just throw surprises. And it's a good surprise, exciting surprise. So imagine to see an angel, how beautiful it is. See that glory is splendor and, and beauty. Yes. Good, uh, good question. Is the voice of the Holy Spirit or its angels? Again, we need to do the tests. We have to go back to another word. Word of God is it glorifying God? Uh, is it a testing with the uh, if you say it's an angel speaking, it can be even a demonic spirit speaking in the form of angels. So we need to attest it with the word of God. Also ask the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Say God can't you. Thank God. Angels were full of Okay. So, when we see angels, are they like the power of 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 the so some angels and like how they should come on this white and this. Yeah, like you know, very bright. So the angels have a similar function to the Holy Spirit. Because they also exist. No, no. Holy Spirit is God. He reveals the mind of God to us. The angelic beings are more like ministering beings. 
They just tell us, guide us, support us, uh, you know, minister to us. They can put a few thoughts, but not the plans and rules of God is all by the Holy Spirit. Sorry? Something like prophetic things, uh, yeah, can see, yes. Yeah, they are messengers. Even you know, there also can be messengers like prophetic beings we can hear, but uh, it can be tainted because we are not perfect vessels. Any more questions? Good questions. Anyone from the online students you are following with us? Any questions? Online students, you seem to be very quiet. Okay, we'll uh, no questions. Any more questions? And we'll move on to chapter 10, Godly Counsel. Godly Counsel is something that we already looked at in detail in history, God's purpose for your life, right? Yes, you studied Godly Counsel there. Um, you know, uh, we know that God guides us through His Word, the Holy Spirit, uh, prophecies, gifts of the Spirit, but also to godly people. Okay, now who uh, are these godly people? These godly people, how do we define these godly people? By their fruits. Okay, they are basically people who have been trained in their senses and they're mature. In their walk with God, their relationship with God, their intimacy with God, uh, we see them through their life and their work and the example of their life. You know that the yeah, other person or you know, this man or woman is godly and they walk in the ways of God. They have a knowledge of scripture. They understand scripture. Uh, you know, so we can draw from their experiences, their wisdom, and their learning. Sometimes, you know, some of us don't want to take godly counsel, right? Uh, we always say, you know, I don't like to be told what to do. You know, or I know what is best, I know what I can do. You know, I don't want anyone telling me what to do because I don't want anyone controlling me. Uh, I can figure this out on my own. I'm very independent. Um, it's good to be independent, it's good to depend on God, it's good to hear from the Holy Spirit, it's good to look at His Word. But also, we must know from Scripture that God gives us, leads us, and guides us, and helps us in our decisions, and guides us, and gives us counsel to godly men. And so we need to humble ourselves. You know, we need to humble ourselves to receive from uh, men and women who are godly, who are telling us, who are correcting us, who are instructing us. Because if, you know, if we cannot love our own brother and sister, how can we love God? We cannot see. If we can't receive instruction and correction from our own parents and you know human beings, say, hey, they're not perfect. Why should they tell me? Nobody is perfect. If we're not willing and humble enough to listen from them. How can we? This is from God whom we have not seen. That is arrogance, you know. So we need to have a humble heart, a heart that is willing to receive godly counsel. Okay, so don't say, hey, what does he know? He doesn't know. He's just telling me something. Or she's just pretending, or she's just acting. You know, nobody can control me. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm my own master. I'm independent. But that's not a humble uh, attitude. Because we know that uh, in God's work shows us, gives us numerous examples how people receive godly counsel and advice. We always saw this when we were looking at God's purpose for her. Like Proverbs 11 says, 11-13 uh, says, where there is no counsel, what happens when there is no counsel? People fall. Okay, when you don't receive counsel from people, what happens? You will fail, you will fall down. What happens when there is a multitude of counselors? There is safety. Okay, so what is it saying? When you receive counsel from people, they're actually drawing from their wisdom, their learning, and their experiences. So, you know, you can't tell your parents, you know, my parents are old fashioned. What do they know? We are the old generation. We are this new generation. They don't understand. No. You need to learn from their experience. We have much more experience, wisdom, understanding. We listen to them. Even though we are, you know, the new generation, they are the old fashioned generation, but they can still guide us and uh, lead us. Okay. You know, even when you have to make plans and decisions, it's good to go and share your plans and decisions with two, three other people. You know, or as a team. Why? Because here it says in Proverbs chapter 
15, verse 22, it says, without cartoons, the plants don't really. That means, you know, when you don't have, you take counsel, when you have a plan, you don't take the ideas of other people, what happens? It will just go all, you know, it's not happening in the right way. But what happens when you have a multitude of counselors? Multitude means when you have many people who you're sharing your plan with. So each one can give their own ideas. You can say, this idea on this thing is not working, that idea is not working. Somebody can give you one right idea which your brain never thought about. Okay, so good to go and share your uh, ideas with others. The seed comes from body men and women, but you should know who. Okay, sometimes, um, uh, you know, you, you want something about finances, you want to know something about education, you want to know something about uh, cars, about planes. Then you go to people, even though they are not religious people, you go to those people who are, you know, trained in those areas, even though they are just worldly, even though they are secular. But if you want to know something about how to handle parenting, marriage, who to marry, how to run your family, what is God's will for your life, then you choose godly. So, but it's not wrong to choose uh, men or women in this world who are well educated, you know, to seek advice for your health, and, you know, about cars, you're buying a car, a motorbike, you need to do something about fashion, you're building a building. You can always go to people who studied well in the secular world, you can ask them and take their experiences. Yes, Sean, can you that? Yes, so uh, that is what, you know, like for example, pastor receives uh, an idea, you know, he will always share it with the pastor team. We put it on the WhatsApp group, can we go about doing these guys or, you know, or when we have our pastor meeting, he shares it with us. And we all giving different, 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 different ideas and we choose the best idea that he has. So, oh yeah, I never thought this sometimes, you know, he just says that. So it's not that uh, he's going to put, take what is happening do this very church planting okay start church planting he's asking for what are ideas they're giving our ideas and he's incorporating the best ideas but he's not saying one person saying no person this is not the time for church planting you just keep that idea away because he knows he's received it from the holy spirit so you need to be discerning so you know this is god's will. So he's asking people hey give me ideas how to See, you are, you are in this field, you know this, give me ideas. Yes, sure. So there's that example is there in the CP voice guidance, I think, in the, in the first chapter. You know, one way to know is when you're sharing with your team, if many of them are saying this is not what God is working, you know, then you uh, go back to God and ask God, this is, this is exactly what you're telling me to do. Uh, you know, that, that gives you a confirmation. But he always will do things in unity. Unity in the body is very important for Christ. So you can't just do something arbitrary, randomly, and say, God's asked me to do for the rest of the church is not along with you. See, when the pastor team is not along with you, they don't feel this is God's time, this is God's calling, or this is what God wants me to do. And you can speak your heart out and say, and give reasons. And you should be humble enough to receive and give. Okay, uh, so it's good to share your ideas and receive feedback from others because you never know one idea can just, you know, give you a, uh, you know, change the whole scenario and you can go about doing things in a better way. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20, can somebody read that? Yeah, you know what counsel does? Make sure it gives you wisdom for your later 
place and that to the uh, place okay and listen to instruction if it's going to help you way into the uh, future it's going to help you in the long run okay somebody can read proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 very interesting here plans are established by counsel by wise counsel being given yeah you know here it says counsel you receive from people is like ammunition is you know guns and all that to wage war okay uh, so you know when uh, when you receive counsel from people they're all in a battlefield all of us in a battlefield yes or no yes we're constantly by battling the desires of our flesh okay our body is telling us to do something the flesh is telling something to do spirit is telling us something else the world is telling us something else okay so we are always in a battle Satan is also there putting thoughts so you know uh, you can use the counsel of wise people to show how you need to fight the battles that you're fighting in life. You understand what you're saying? Yes or no? You didn't understand. You know, we are all in a battlefield. We're all fighting. Our enemy, who's our enemy? Satan, flesh, and uh, you know, desires of our flesh. And we want to do what God wants us to do, but sometimes we're not able to do it. So, you know, what do we go at? We go to God, people, and who can give us God gain? Counsel, right? And when their body comes to, we can know how to fight our battles. Of course, God has given us the weapons, but they can help us to see what weapons to use or when. So when you face challenges, difficulties, problems, you receive God counsel because it can help you, uh, you know, win your victory. But it's important for us to receive the right kind of counsel. Remember what Psalm 1, chapter 1, verse 1 says? Blessed is the man who walks not from the counsel of the ungodly, right? Who stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers or mockers. So don't go to the ungodly for counsel, go to the godly for counsel, but also, of course, when you want to do, you know, want to do something about science or you know, anything about your car, the mechanic, when you're anything about your body, go to the doctor. They're not necessarily have to be godly people, but you can receive their advice, but also depend on the holy uh, spirit. Okay. But uh, the most important thing for receiving counsel is, you know, just be willing to uh, be corrected also at times. Okay. You know, godly people can correct us. We need to be uh, willing to take correction. If you look at page 114, uh, Proverbs 12 says, those who love instruction, loves. Those who love instruction, love what? Knowledge. Those who don't love instruction is what? Who are they? They are stupid. See? So here's something that says, I don't want anyone telling me what to do. We are actually a stupid person. You know, you don't love knowledge. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18, it says, Poverty and shame will come to whom? To the one who does not, yeah, does not receive correction. If you don't receive correction, what will you get? Poverty and shame. Poverty and shame. Okay, but those who uh, listen to counsel, correct themselves, they will be honored. Okay, those who who is often rebuked and hardened his head, they suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. So if you're somebody who never listens to instructions, don't receive correction, what will happen to you? You harden your head, you're very hard on it, stubborn, you do what you want, you will be destroyed. You understand? Very strong scripture. Okay? So we need to uh, listen to correction, heed correction, and um, follow, uh, you know, instructions. Okay, uh, here there are some verses here in page number 113. You can read that later on. Uh, and the last point here is about counsel of godly parents. Who is a wise son? According to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1. Wise son or wise daughter, somebody who listens to their father's instruction, but not the scoffer who does not it's like, huh, what does he mean? Huh, what does the mother mean? That's been a scoffer. Okay, somebody who rebukes correction. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Can somebody read that, please? Right. 
not working at all. But then you can make new jobs. But then you can get the same while I'm in the same way. They change. Yeah. Don't forsake your father's and mother's instruction. You know, because we have a problem. Which is the only commandment among the Ten Commandments is a promise. Father, father, and mother is the only commandment with a promise. So that it can go well with you all the days of your life. And you know, that's the only commandment that just stands between human relationships and God. But first of all, what are about God? The, the rest, the rest uh, uh, six are about human relations. And the one that stands in between God and man is, you know, honoring the Father and Father. So, so such an important priority for God himself. Here uh, we read in page number 115, you know, and 116 about, uh, uh, you know, Pastor, you were so zealous to do ministry that after his 10th grade, he thought he'd go directly to start doing ministry. And, uh, you know, he, it, uh, his father said, you know, you don't uh, go directly to do ministry, you study, and you can do ministry later. But he was so adamant and stubborn, he really broke his father's heart. His father did not know what to do. He took him to two pastors. Okay. And both the pastors said, you know, uh, what age did Jesus start his ministry? What age did Jesus start his ministry? And he was 30. Right. So they asked Master Ashish this question, then why are you in such a hurry? So, you know, it was God speaking to him, and then he realized that he has to study. So he went on to do his engineering, his master's, and then moved his business and also started church and do uh, ministry. So, how did it, you know, he was so zealous, so stubborn, you know, after 10 standard, and then he was straight away and preached the gospel and do ministry, but it was to godly counsel that. You know, he heard and then he received, and that is helping him so much uh, in his ministry today. And also, how he did not listen to his father, so he's saying it's so important to listen to parents. Okay, any questions on godly counsel? No, uh, I'm in a hurry because we've already finished most of these things. We looked at uh, it in uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Uh, we have one more big book to finish, one more publication, and we just have a few more weeks. So that is why I'm speeding my pace because this is all something that we've already studied. Okay. Uh, any questions anyone has with your online students? Yes, Francis, you have any questions? Okay. Online students, are you all with me? Very quiet. All of you there? Nobody's saying anything. Okay. Okay, we look at chapter 11, uh, the renewed mind. This is also be something we study very detailed in uh, fulfilling God's purpose, so we just go through it. Uh, why is it important for us to have a renewed mind? What did we study? Uh, Can I have dreams from God? We can do things from God. We are open to do things from God. Okay. Why is it important to have a renewed mind? We also studied this in the beginning of the chapter of uh, uh, you know receiving God's guidance. A renewed mind helps us to know God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Right? Did you study for the fulfilling God's purpose for your life exam? Okay. Also, what does a renewed mind do to us? Where does the Holy Spirit reveal things in our heart, but also in our mind? That is why we have the mind of Christ. When do we have the mind of Christ? When, we are, when our mind is renewed, we are able to understand and discern what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Okay, uh, can a carnal mind, can a fleshly mind understand what the Holy Spirit is telling us? Can a fleshly mind understand the will of God, the purposes of God? No, it's very important that we have uh, the mind of God. That is why, you know, the word scripture teaches us that we don't lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, we lean on God. Proverbs chapter 
three verses five and six. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Okay. So we don't trust in our own understanding. Okay, but we lean and depend totally and trust on God. It does not mean that because we lean totally and trust on God, we don't use our mind. You know, God uses our, He's given us our mind. He wants us to use our mind. He's created our mind. He also gives us instructions in our uh, mind. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Can someone read that? Proverbs 4, 26. You already studied this book. Yeah. Yes, it's ponder the way of your feet. You already studied this in detail. This verse ponder means what? Make sure, plan, you carefully study, watch the path that you are taking, the path that you are going. Make sure that it is the right path, it's firm, it's unshakable. Okay, uh, God has given us a mind, He will instruct us what to do. Um, okay, the problem is the enemy also uses our minds. Okay, and you know where the battle is? It's in the mind. The stronghold is in the mind. When the when you know where all the thoughts come from, it's our mind, and that is why the, our mind is not renewed. Renewed means our mind is not filled with the word of God. Our mind is not in tune with the Holy Spirit. Our mind is not listening to the Holy Spirit. What happens at that time? The enemy can use our mind to call lustful, dirty, evil thoughts, and also lies. Most of us are living lives. You know that? If you look at your life, what are you thinking and believing and living is lies. I can't do this. I'm not fully sure. I'm very afraid to walk in front. I can't speak. I can't say this. I don't look. You know, I'm not smart. I'm not intelligent. All these are lies from the um, enemy. So it's important that we are renewing our mind. And we studied in detail Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. Can somebody read that, please? Lovely. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, Lord, by the mercy of God, that you present upon your enemies, I have given the God which is your most terrible servant, and you not be confirmed with this word, but be transformed with the truth of mind, that you may be. Yeah, so you have a sense that we need not conform to this world but to transform by the renewing of our mind. And a renewed mind helps us to know what is a good, pleasing, and perfect way of God. When in our mind will be able to understand automatically, quickly, in that instant, in that situation, what is God's will, what I need to do. We won't have two doubts about it. If this person, the world is telling me this, God is telling me this, what do I do? So there won't be any questions. Your mind is totally renewed. You know, when your mind is renewed, you are able to understand the thoughts of God. You know why? Because what does the Bible say? God says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. So God's thoughts are so, so much higher. So our mind to understand the higher thoughts of God, our mind should be renewed. Okay. Um, and how do we renew our mind? The word of God. And when we're able to renew our mind, the word of God, we're able to uh, approve, examine the will of God. Okay. And uh, what's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay. We also need to train our minds to know what God wants us to do. So can somebody read Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, please? Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. For no by this time ought to be teachers. We need someone to teach you obey the first principles of the life of God. And we have come to move the book and not solve the book. For everyone who partakes only of the earth is an extreme in the word of righteousness, for he is a day. But solid will it belongs to those who are both age, that is, those who are raising of these have their senses exercised to discern what they are doing. Yeah, so it's talking here about the mature mind. Okay, how is a mind mature? Mature mind comes by age, right? 
Did you make comes by age? Can a young person be mature? Can a godly person be mature in a young age? Yes, how? By the word of God. When we stay on the word of God, when we meditate on the word of God. When we are meditating and studying God's word and filling our hearts and our minds with God's word, what happens? Our senses are trained. Our senses are trained. That means when we look at something, say immediately we know that's evil, I shouldn't be looking, we'll turn away. You know, when our mind is thinking some dirty thought, hey, that's not what I should be thinking. You know, you turn your mind, this is what I should do. You know, when you're thinking about your mouth is going to say something, say, oh, this is not what I'm supposed to be uh, saying. I need to say things that are enriching, building, uplifting, I need to speak to uh, one another in psalms and the spiritual songs. So, you know, the word of God actually trains our senses, trains our emotions. Some of you are saying, I'm not able to control my anger. If you are reading God's word, if you are staying in God's word, you are rooted and built up in God's word, you know, it will even train your emotions, your anger. You can able to control your anger. You can control what you're saying even in your anger because that's the power of God's word. It trains our senses. We become mature in every area of our life. And we automatically know what is right and wrong. We will not think twice about it. We will just do what is right, even though we know that, you know, okay, if I'm going to do this wrong thing, I'm going to get into trouble, my boss will not like me, you know, I have a lot of problems and difficulties, but irrespective of me doing what is right, you will automatically be doing the right thing. So, solid food, you know, is the strong word of God that makes us make sure that trains our uh, senses, okay? Um, We'll also look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses uh, 8 to 10 and 17. We've already studied this before, but we will tell it again. You know, to pick the weekend. So, can somebody read Proverbs 5, 8, uh, Ephesians 5, 8 to 10 and verse 17, please? For you are not silence, but now you are in the law. Walk in the children of the For the fruit of the flesh is seen all of us, righteousness and truth. Thank you. So it says, you know, as children of light, we need to live our lives finding out. That means we need to test, examine, food, discern, or figure out what is acceptable to God, what God wants us to do. And how do we know it? How do we know what is acceptable to God when our minds are? Review. Automatically, we know what is right and uh, wrong. So, when we look at things, you know, facts, reasons, investigate, when we ponder, our mind is really fine. Automatically, we say, This is not right. What this person is saying, what person is doing is not right. You know, it's not pleasing to uh, God. The word acceptable here means what is fully agreeable and well pleasing to God. We already studied this, we're just going through, you know, we will automatically know what is agreeable, well-pleasing will of God in our uh, lives. And in verse 17, it says, do not be unwise. That means do not be foolish, do not be stupid, don't be rash in what you're doing, do things without reason. But, you know, you can understand. Understand means, you know, our mind can put things together. We can understand what is right, know what is right, what is wrong, and we can know what we need to do in any given uh, situations and that is what was a renewed mind. Okay, a renewed mind is able to use uh, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding of the ways of God, the thoughts of God. Um, when able to process all the information that we receive and know what is pleasing in God's sight, what is acceptable, what is right in God's sight in that situation, and we begin to do that. And you know, uh, we will likewise receive guidance from God. By God's guidance will come very often to us. So the new kind is able to walk in the ways of God, is able to think the thoughts of God, is able to take us beyond the natural realm, to see into the spiritual realm, the spiritual, the supernatural realm, able to see miracles and divine possibilities. It also aligns our mind, our will, and our spirit to what God's will, spirit, and his desire for our uh, life is and a renewed mind 
kind of looks at the supernatural and thinks that it is normal because so much we've just been trained to live in the supernatural and to you know be directed in the supernatural. Okay, so that is the end of that lesson on um, the new mind. Anyone has any questions? We'll have to end class now, it's already time. Uh, online students, uh, are you all okay with your uh, with the online test assessment one? The due date is this evening, so please submit your assignment on time, your assessments on time. Any questions you have about your assessment? Any questions about today's class? Okay, if there's no questions, we will end class. Thank you for joining class today and have a blessed weekend. God bless you all and see you next week. Thank you.